Hello, everyone. Um, today, we are going to talk about data replication. What is data replication? Data replication means keeping a copy of your data across in multiple nodes in the network. And that's the reality of software engineering today, that you need to replicate your data uh, across maybe same geography or across regions in different geographies. And this is essentially required for to make your system run in a reliable manner, uh, especially when it is serving large number of users. Okay, so this data replication is different from data sharding, which we'll cover in another video. Uh, today we're going to focus on uh, data replication and in particular we're going to talk about what does it mean to have a single leader uh, data replication. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the reasons why you would need to replicate your data across multiple nodes. Now, um, there could be various reasons. Uh, number one reason is essentially um, availability. So how do you ensure that your system is available, say, for example, your database chair goes down. So the way to make sure that it's always available is by having redundancy in your data, in your data layer, so to speak. And the second reason is scalability. So as you are scaling your system up, you want to add more and more nodes. So hence, you need to replicate the data across multiple nodes. And the third reason is latency. So suppose your application is spread across multiple geographies around the world, then you would want to make sure that um, your data is accessed from as near to your geography as possible. So that will help in its latency. And then finally, in, in terms of uh, high availability, so essentially uh, making sure that uh, your system is always up and running. So this is all about why you need data replication. Now let's look at um, what are the various models of data replication. So typically you would find three main major models of data replication. One is the uh, single leader data replication, which is probably the most common one in, in uh, the world today. Um, and that is the one that we're gonna talk about in a little bit more detail. Uh, the second one is multi-leader, uh, where you have multiple uh, sources of truth, so to speak, or multiple places where you can update the data. And finally, a leaderless model where you can have a large number of nodes and there's no such appointed leader as such. We're gonna go, to, go through each of these models uh, in detail, but in today's session, we're gonna talk about the single leader model, which is the most common one. Um, another thing you need to be aware of is uh, the difference between synchronous and asynchronous uh, followers. So we're gonna talk about that also in a little bit more detail. And the other thing we're gonna talk about is what happens when a node fails. So we're gonna cover both the scenarios once a leader fails and a follower fails. Okay, let's now show you a simple picture which will give you an idea about what how replication really looks like. Okay, so let's say your, your data resides in this, uh, when you started your application, you had this as a primary node, let's call it the leader. And all the data access was happening to this leader node. Uh, and as you started to move to a, a replicated data model, you would want the, this leader data to be replicated into multiple nodes. Now, many different databases and uh, both relational and non-relational databases now support this out of the box through some sort of configuration. For example, Oracle has got a data guard and various other databases also have similar features. So say leader has got um, two followers. Uh, let's say follower one and follower two. Now, the idea of a uh, single leader and application is that all the, essentially all the updates, all the writes are happening on the leader. And 
then the data gets replicated to the followers from the leader. Uh, the followers also provide access to data to the application here, but they are principally used for or only used for reads. So these are only reads. So let me just write it down. The leader, the leader is in the read write mode and the followers are only read. Uh, and the idea is that every time a, an update happens, the read happens in the, on the leader uh, node, it replicates the data to the follower nodes. And the end users or the application tier, they essentially read uh, the follower nodes as they are geographically located closer to the follower nodes. So this is the model. Um, now let's look at what it means to replicate data from the leader to the follower. In this case, there are two followers here. Uh, we, we, uh, we have established that the, there's only a single source of truth, uh, which is the leader. And we've got two followers who just simply get replicated data and they are used for only read purposes. The reason why this model is more popular than other models is that you don't have to worry about which one is the source of truth. And there's no uh, issues around how you reconcile if there's a conflict uh, between different nodes. In this case, there is there will be no conflicts because all the rights are happening on the leader. Okay, now let's look at what it means uh, in terms of synchronous versus asynchronous um, replication. So say a write is happening to the leader, um, there is an option of either doing a synchronous update to the followers, in which case, once a write happens, then until the write, the replication actually completes on the follower nodes, the write operation is not considered as complete. So what that also means that there is uh, an impact on the latency on the leader, because the write operation will now take longer because it has to wait for the followers to complete their writes as well. Uh, the replication part needs to be completed. So uh, there are various uh, models that are followed in, in this case. Uh, the most common one is that uh, only one follower is assigned as the, the synchronous follower and rest all follower nodes are marked as asynchronous. What that really means is that we are okay to lose a follower in the, in the process if the SA node goes down. We can always rewrite that, but there's only, you're ensured that there's always one follower node which has got a fully replicated data. Uh, it really depends on, on the usage model and how the topology of uh, your nodes of your applications are set up. Uh, you can very well follow the case where all the followers are actually synchronous, but then that will impact this, uh, your, your latency of, of the data. Okay, so that is about synchronous versus asynchronous. And now let's look at what it means in terms of failures. So suppose your one of your followers dies. Let's say this node goes, goes out. So what do we do? Essentially, this all that it means is that uh, follower one is still getting data replicated. And once the follower two comes back, it needs to essentially pull all the data, the data that has uh, changed since it went down. So the logs in the follower two will have that information and then synchronize the data post that uh, failure. In that case, follower two will come back up to speed and then it will start serving the data operations again. So, Follower coming up to speed after a node failure is a little bit of an easier problem than say leader going out of the equation. Say suppose this leader goes out of the equation. Now, in this kind of situation, there are two things that we need to worry about. One is that how do we appoint a leader between the followers? So you can have various different algorithms in terms of how the leader is chosen amongst a set of followers. So maybe you can choose the follower which is the most 
closely aligned with the leader. In other words, which one, the one follower that actually updates uh, the replication happens the first. So for example, in this case, let's say follower one is the one that replicates first. So it will have the closest source of truth. So you appoint the follower one as the new leader. So let's, let me just write it down. So if this becomes the new leader. Now, uh, this new leader becomes the source of truth. Uh, however, there are two things that we need to worry about. Number one is that any client that was previously talking to uh, this leader here, now instead needs to talk to the new leader because this is now the new source of truth for all the update operations, the right operations. So your client configuration needs to be changed, which is something that you need to be aware of. And the second thing you need to be aware of is what happens when this leader actually comes back to life. Suppose it was because of a VM failure, this leader now comes back up. Uh, it needs to reconcile with the fact that now there is a new leader and hence it needs to relinquish its leadership to this leader and become a follower. So those algorithms need to be put in place in order for this kind of model to work. Okay, so we have covered at a very, very high level what data replication means. In our subsequent videos, we are gonna talk about the various other types of replication such as multi-leader replication and leaderless replication. Thank you for watching.